Welcome to today's lecture analysis of flapper nozzle valves. Uh, this is continuation of our previous lecture which was on 3 way spool valve as well as introduction to flapper nozzle valve. Now, if we recapitulate then 3 way spool valves used with unequal area pistons to provide direction a reversal. Now, in most of the cases we have found that four way valves are very common used in fluid power. If we control say rotary actuator say any motor in that case we prefer four way valve because there the direction reversal is not very frequent. In comparison to that where the linear pistons are used then due to the frequent reversal it is found that 3 way valve which is cheaper than 4 way valve can be used. Also this has uh, advantage with uh, the linear actuator of unequal areas. Unequal areas means in it is head side uh, usually there is no rod or even it might be on the either side of piston there are piston rod, but that piston rods are of unequal area. Now, also we learned that this is this will be most advantageous <coughs> if the control pressure is half of the system pressure. Now, why it is like that? We are trying to control something, then apparently we are having pressure on the both the side of the actuator and then we trying to control. The main reason is that this can be explained like this. Say for example, we would like to say suppose this is an indicator that indicator we would like to put a particular positions. Now, if I try to control with one hand definitely we can do it, but it is always better if you try to control this by two hands that means creating pressure from both the side and we are moving this. So, for the position control and the as well as with the force control um, it is always better that this pressure from both the side and that is why uh, in uh, you will find in the servo control there is pressure on the both the side obviously there will be loss definitely there will be flow and pressure loss, but from the control point of view this is unavoidable. Now, in three way spool valve what we find that the oil this is the supply oil and this supply oil has direct um, entry to the rod and side of the piston and there is entry to the other side or the piston head side uh, through this uh, control flow. Okay. This means that while we are opening this side if we keep it closed then supply pressure is going this side and this is being moved up in upward direction. Whereas, if this is opened then oil is going through this and this orifice is controlled in such a way part of the oil will go to the control uh, um, side or, or, or in other words head side of the piston to control the motion of uh, this piston and uh, part of the flow will go back to tank. Now, uh, for this uh, pressure um, ratio which is uh, perhaps the best for the control of such uh, three way 
valve and uh, the pistons, unequal pistons, the area is also half. I mean area ratio is half or in other words the area of this piston divided by the area of the ring side is equal to 2. Now, these valves are made again critical center for better response in servo valve. Now, you see this what is critical center valve? Critical sen center valve means the this is uh, just critically lapped that means width of this ideally width of this groove and width of this land of this pool is equal ideally dimensionally if we consider the nominal dimensions they are equal. However, to maintain the tolerances because even if this is closed there will be radial clearance through which there will be leakage usually you will find if you measure the dimensions very accurately dimensions of this land is slightly more than the uh, groove width. Okay. Anyway, this critical center valve will have very uh, less bandwidth that means, at the uh, null positions there will be uh, less loss as well as response will be very quick. This means that if you move in either directions the response will begin almost immediately. So, um, as we need frequent uh, movement I mean reversal motion of these pistons. So, critical centers spool valve is the best. Now, if we recall our earlier development of the formulations then we can uh, write down the load flow for the displacement is in the positive directions that means, in this directions uh, um, yeah, in this directions then um, this equation is written as the C d the coefficient of friction and this is the uh, um, total area of the orifice how the w is the width and x p is the spool displacement. Hmm. Now, w is width in this case is the total peripheral length of this pool or so to say inside of this groove that means, in this case directly we can get w is equal to pi into d that is diameter of this pool or d p whatever it might be. And then this flow here this load flow we are considering this p 1 and p 2 is the pressure difference. So, that will be the flow pressure here is p 1 here it is p 2. Now, for the other directions then the flow is uh, load flow is given by now uh, the p c uh, is the pressure control pressure there then other pressure is the 0. So, p c into 2 by rho root under root and this is the again area of the orifice c d um, should be determined experimentally, but normally for uh, such a spool where this edges are very sharp normally this C D can be taken the von Mises model which is around 0 0.62, 0 0.63 something like that. So, normally we do not need to go for any special experiment for such valves and uh, but the W in case of uh, the uh, that full open valve that means the full groove the w is equal to pi into d as I have told, but sometimes what it, it is there insti instead of this groove continuous groove we may have rectangular hole. Then the length of this hole along the spool sleeve is equal to the this height of the spool land for critical center. However, 
this group width we uh, sum up to get w. So, for example, there are four groups which perhaps only spreaded over uh, 15 degree or 30 degree, then we simply add this w to get uh, the orifice opening area. And if the if there is a some circular grid hole or some other type of hole, then these are calculated accordi accordingly. However, in most of the cases, we will find that this is the linear port opening. Mm, that means, rectangular port, we will get this rectangular port, which is here the hole is rectangular or the full groove. Now, flow gain is same, but pressure sensitivity is half that way 4 way critical center valve. This is if we recall the 4 way valve analysis and compare the flow gain that is the, the 3 different coefficients valve coefficients then flow gain coefficients shows that here this is pressure sensitivity is half whereas, flow gain will be same as that of the 4 way valve. Mm, due to this reason, um, error to overcome loads will be more in case of 3 way valve this will be more. Mm, then why the why the 3 way valve? First of all it is very less expensive and it is uh, better or quick control can be achieved by uh, this arrangement 3 way valve arrangement. However, this is for the control we have to look into this error. It also can be shown that dynamic load errors are almost double than in comparison to 4 way central valve that limits the application of 3 way servo valves. This means that we need to control the error there is no way that we will allow the error that means that will be drifted, but the question is that uh, to eliminate such error how much time we can spend. If there is we need to control it within very short time very quick response in that case better to choose 4 way valve otherwise where we can have we can allow more time for such control for such eliminating errors in that case we can go for 3 way valve. Now, <coughs> what is uh, flapper nozzle valve? We find that in flapper nozzle valve that instead of in case of uh, the three way spool valve we have seen that spool is controlling the flow. In that case that means basically it is allowing the oil to go to the ring side ring and side of the piston and while we are trying to control um, that motion of this piston we are allowing the oil on the other hand side, but that flow we are controlling by 3 way spool valve is not it. In that case what we find say if we compare with that previous one then oil is allowed to go into road in uh, road uh, uh, this sorry this piston head side, hmm? but that is again controlled through an orifice and part of the oil is allowed to go back to the tank through an orifice the opening of which is controlled by a cantilever beam that is basically a plate very thin plate is mounted pivoted on a uh, pin this pivot and then this is moved by some mechanism in that case we call the torque motor is there. So, this means that like the other one like the spool valve one this supply oil can freely go to the rod end side if it would like to come in the head side in that case first of all it is going through a fixed orifice the hair orifice is fixed 
in case of spool valve this orifice is also varying this is also varying but in this case this is a fixed orifice and fixed orifice and this is being controlled another thing is there uh, in in such control that the instead of this opening which is circular obviously this orifice area the important area is that curtain area curtain means if we consider the diameter which is dn pi dn is the periphery periphery into that height is the curtain area and that area is important uh, in this case not the directly this orifice area then flapper valves um, are usually used in low pressure applications where the pressure is relatively low now it allows higher leakage losses and such valves are of low cost and less sensitive to duct what it is in case of the most um, um, crucial problem in hydraulic is the duct particles in case of servo valve where these components are almost match part this means that slip diameter and the spool diameter is made such that we get minimum leakage loss and very high sensitivity in any flow in that case if dart comes in between then problem becomes either this will damage the spool or the whole operation will be stopped due to this dart particles and thus controlling this dart or we if the dart comes in breaking that dart into smaller particles or removing uh, allowing this uh, dart to go in this uh, other side all such uh, mechanism is uh, done to design a very good valve on the other hand there is also um, research is that if we allow this dart to go with the flow and easily it can go through this leakage path then it is seen that in instead of spool valve if we use this flapper nozzle valve where this opening is relatively more the particle can go out directly and it does not stop the machine at least the what stop the function at least although there will be some disturbance. So, in that way flapper nozzle valve is uh, better than spool valve. So, this is uh, the biggest advantage using the uh, flapper nozzle valve. Now, flapper driven by torque motor as I told there will be a torque motor. Torque motor means it is not um, rotating fully and its output of course, output of motor is torque. In that case this torque motor means it is just giving a small amount of torque actuation is small in one direction it can rotate in the opposite direction say if the current uh, sense is reversed and these are uh, used to move uh, such flapper. Now, <coughs> again in that case uh, what we look into this, this is comparable with uh, three way spool valve and we have that single flapper jet application of the three way spool valve mechanism. This is acting as a three way spool valve but in most of the cases the application of uh, this flapper valve is at this pilot, st pilot stage of four way valve. What it is? Um, I will show later that if we use this jet in uh, also in the other directions then we can imagine here a spool four way spool valve. Now, that four way spool valve again is being used to um, actuate another spool valve which is also four way which is actually the main stage of the valve because in many cases the load is so high that if you use a single stage pole then 
it it becomes difficult to control that spool okay the spool force is very high and with high force control becomes difficult then to move that spool four way say four way spool we had another stage where spool is very small hmm. we need to actuate that spool valve with very less amount of force which is controlled by this proper knowledge and uh, uh, nozzle and this nozzles are at both the sides and then that main stage controls uh, that pilot stage control the main stage that we you have seen that uh, earlier uh, in the servo valve section. So, this is there are the basic application of such uh, flapper nozzle valves. However, this is also used for three way valve used as a three way valve for uh, actuator control of um, unequal area. Now, the pressure flow curves have better linearity although there are losses more loss, but we get better linearity. So, control becomes easier also performance of these devices are quite predictable and dependable that means, where we do not need very quick response we can allow such losses then for the low cost applications this is better than spool valve four way spool valve. Now, single jet flapper valve which we have learned in earlier lecture is also called as three way flapper valve. We should basically call it flapper valve, but once a single jet valve is there then we call it three way flapper valve. Now, for that load flow equation where which we have uh, derived earlier what we find that uh, load flow uh, divided by this orifice area that is the fixed orifice A 0 into the this is the coefficient of discharge uh, there this area is um, nothing but pi d 0 square uh, by 4 okay. and C 0 d 0 is the coefficient of discharge here. Then we get P C by P S um, that is the control pressure by the system pressure this will be definitely less than 1. So, this term is uh, always a real term and then x f divided by x f 0 where x f is the uh, flapper motion and x f 0 is the initial gap there initial gap. Okay. Now, this P C by P S is usually found uh, 0.6 is good for uh, such flapper nozzle valve and uh, in case of spool valve 0.5 and in this case 0.6 is better. Orifice ratio at the null point is derived as um, this C D F is here the coefficient of discharge into A f is the this curtain area and divided by the fixed orifice area into the coefficient of discharge there, uh, there. And if this ratio is maintained 1 at null position then the performance of such flapper nozzle single jet flapper nozzle valve will be the best. Now, <coughs> again in practice that fixed gap divided by uh, diameter of this orifice is usually 1 by 16. That means, you can imagine this this diameter if this is uh, say 1.6 millimeter in that case this will be how much this will be 0 0.1 millimeter. Okay. This gap will be 0 0.1 millimeter and usually this flapper nozzle valve you will find that of that range I will we will see this later. And F 1 F 1 is the force due to this flow here remains also P C and A n A n is the um, 
area of this this uh, hole not this curtain area just compared with this a n is this area ok. Now, what we find also that um, if we differentiate this force with the, the flapper uh, nozzle movement then this becomes 4 pi into C d f square P s into x f 0 and this is equivalent to the spring coefficient of fluid spring ok. If we compare this value then we find as if this is a fluid spring, but it is in the negative it is a negative spring what does it mean in case of positive spring this force increases with the when this is compressed say this is uh, or the tensile press where it is being tensioned, but it is other way in that case if we, we reduce the length then the force uh, will uh, increase and due to that control becomes a problem. So, how it is controlled in case of single flapper jet we usually use a spring here in the opposite direction, but if we use the double jet in that case opposite side also there is a nozzle. So, we can control the flow from both the sides and uh, this balancing problem uh, will not be there it will become very uh, easy to control the motion of this flapper. Therefore, double jet is very common where we use the flapper jet valve and as it is mentioned here this is usually used to control the pilot stage of a main stage servo valve or so. Now, if we look into the what is the forces on the flapper this this is one there will be static pressure force. Now, here if we look into this flapper nozzle valve with a double jet then you can see that how um, this it is working. So, suppose if we would like to move this flapper in this direction we need to have more force than that this means that F 2 should be greater than F 1. You see if we would like to move you can make this is 0, but if we would like to move this one with a controlled motions then this should have a force and this should have also a force ok. Now, this is um, done um, in valve operation. There is also dynamic pressure or the force due to the fluid velocity. What is static pressure? Simply static pressure is will be equal to P 1 into this area not the curtain area. Curtain area that orifice area is used for the load flow and other things, but normally when we are calculated the force then we consider this area which is equal for both the nozzles. However, the pressure will be different whereas, dynamic pressure is that if uh, while we are considering the dynamic pressure in that case we have to consider the velocity of the fluid which is um, impinging on this flapper. Now, referring to this uh, figure then and considering the Bernoulli's equations F 1 that is the force can be derived as F 1 is equal to P 1 we are calculating this force F 1 then P 1 then rho u 1 square into a n a n is area of this orifice hole diameter ok. Now, what is uh, here in the above equation right hand side right hand one first one is the static and second one is the dynamic part. So, this is the static part that means P 1 a n is the static force and half a n rho u 1 square is the dynamic force u 1 being the velocity at the plane of nozzle diameter that means this velocity oil how this oil is going it is going like that it is coming like this and then going in this directions 
Now, we should measure the velocity along this perpendicular directions and at the vicinity of the surface of the flapper that velocity is called u 1. Now, it is expressed as big equation that is q s by a n and then c d f the q s is the flow through this nozzle which may be q 2 and q 4 here pi d n uh, then no here this this is the while we are calculating this flow as I told that we will con consider this curtain area. So, this is the curtain area into this 2 by rho into p 1 under root that other pressure is 0. So, we consider the p 1 whereas, a n is the area of this hole. So, this is pi d n square that is the diameter of this nozzle uh, opening divided by 4 and if we equate further this uh, we will arrived into uh, this expression. Now, combining this above two equations and simplifying what we get f 1 is equal to p 1 into 1 plus 16 c d f square x f 0 minus x f whole square divided by d n square into a n. Similarly, if we equate the f 2 in the same way, uh, we will get this f 2 will be expressed in this form. Okay. So, this is not difficult, but look into this here we get minus sign here plus sign. Why it is minus signs? In that case, we have considered that this is the positive motions. That means, x f is positive in this directions. So, while this flapper is moving in this directions with say theta positive also, then this length is being decreased. So, physically this initial distance minus this pull movement will give uh, the will be used to find out the curtain area. In this case, due to this motion, this height is being increased. So, this will be plus sign here. Now, if x f itself is negative, then automatically this will be corrected. So, this equation so we, we can use this is the general form of the equation. Okay. Now, <coughs> then uh, this controlling force as I told that force from both the directions. So, this must be f 1 minus f 2 this might be negative also because f 2 might be more than f 1, but anyway this can be expressed in this form simply we have subtracted this from this one and this is the final form of the force. Now, combining the again two equations and uh, oh sorry this is the perhaps the same this is perhaps uh, by mistake it has been copied. So, we will go to the next slide. Now, a good flapper valve has usually x f 0 by d n is 1 by 16th that which we have learned in earlier lecture. So, this gives this is a very good value for designing such valve and also the flapper normally works near the null point both p l and x f are um, in significantly small. That means, normally this is for as we are trying to control the pilot stage in that case load flow load pressure is small as well as this motion is also very small. Because in case of because this is basically the high pressure process the main valve in that case what we have found this valve opening is very small this x f this motion of the valve is very small, but that will generate a very large flow due to the pressure difference. Anyway this 
if these are too small therefore, the right hand side of the equation 6 earlier 6 second and third terms are much smaller in comparison to the first term and then finally, we you have to see if you look into that uh, equations and then we can neglect two terms and we can have this is the usable equations to estimate the controlling force. Okay. Then we calculate the torque on flapper that means, how much torque we need to operate this one. The equation of motion of flapper is uh, in, in dynamic terms can be written as this T d is equal to this is the um, inertia and then d square theta by d t square this is the torsional spring stiffness into theta and this is the force into r is this arm. Now, here uh, um, I, I would uh, say that this flapper may also deflect okay. while we are calculating this torque we do not care about that, but while we are really calculating with the motion of theta and we are trying to re relate x f 0 we have to careful about that. Where T d is the torque required to drive the flapper. Now, as x f is much much less than r f there is some problem with this uh, compatibility this is actually x f is much much less than r that means, this length and x f is the spool moment and for that we can consider tan theta actually we have to consider the tan theta which is x f by r is equal to almost equal to theta and therefore, this we can combine this 7, 8, 9 these 3 equations and we will get uh, the torque equation in this form. You can have a look into these equations and this uh, equation is used for estimating the torque. Flow force due to the fluid impingement on flapper give negative spring action which already we have learned. The negative spring rate is usually 5 kilo Newton per meter and at 7 mega Pascal with uh, x f 0 is not not 7 uh, not point not 75 millimeter. You see this how small it is even less than 0 0.1 millimeter okay. and then Mm, actually, this is this value is just a realistic value. And this is to understand uh, this uh, what are the parameters, parametric values of such flapper nozzle valve. Okay. And uh, k by r square, k is the torsional spring thickness, must be greater than uh, the spring rate to have effective controllability that you can understand if if this is not greater then we can we will not be able to control it. So, we according to this value once we decide this value first of all we estimate this one and from there um, we have to estimate this one and accordingly we can design or select a uh, torque motor for a flapper nozzle valve. Now, after determining the flow gain requirement for the main system, main stage valve for um, direct applications, main stage valve means uh, that means, this flapper valve we are using as a pilot stage or it we are using this uh, directly for controlling uh, the actuator. What we do the nozzle orifice diameter can be selected using the flow gain equations. We use directly this flow gain equations and from there we find out what will be the diameter of the nozzle. Say what how much flow gain we need from there we can have this value 
as well as have this value and CDF we can have from the experience we have to take because we have not yet designed the uh, this nozzle. However, we know this what oil is being used what will be the system pressure and from there we estimate the diameter of the nozzle and rearranging this equation give is in this form. Now, x f 0 should be as small as possible to have better pressure sensitivity and minimum leakage. On the other hand it should be large enough to give a passage to the dirt because basically flapper valve is used to uh, allow the dirt hmm, particle size of about 120 micron in uh, general purpose application and 10 micron in precision servo valve applications. You see normally in uh, ordinary valve general purpose valve uh, we uh, can allow the particle of 120 micron in in that case usually you will find after the pump we can allow this flow directly to the valve and before the pump we have only a strainer which is in the range of at the most 150 micron or something like that 120 micron this value if we use this value then probably that is 120 micron. You can understand it is 120 micron particle size means the filter we have used it is a mesh of wear the diagonal length probably uh, is uh, of that size 120 micron or so. But in case of servo valve where the servo applications we are doing this gap is very small it it can if, if the particle size more than 10 micron then it becomes difficult to move that valve. In that case usually a high pressure filter is used after the pump and before this valve ok. So, we need a high pressure valve again using a high pressure valve definitely a loss to the system, but um, this uh, we cannot compensate because such a control is definitely expensive, but we need to control say for example, machine tools even missile control etcetera. Keeping the carton area about one fourth of nozzle orifice area is a good design. So, this is um, just we are considering the valve design. So, this value it is from the experience if we maintain such uh, relations then the valve design will be better. Now, this means that pi d n x f 0 is uh, less than 1 fourth into pi d n square by 4 or specific results and this simplification results in x f 0 is uh, less than equal to d n by 16 which we have already which we are using the yes this relation already we have used. Anyway the fixed upstream orifice is usually short tube orifice with length to diameter ratio is 2 to 4. Again another important factor is that say this is the orifice opening and this is the length of this uh, nozzle what should be the length we can um, no this is not this orifice we are talking about this other orifice here mm, that has to be there to control this flow both the side this orifice will be fixed orifice will be along with this tube now in that case usually there a short tube orifice with length to diameter 2 is to 4 is used. That means, orifice are of um, different type orifice are used in sub valve control. 
in that case we can imagine that that orifice is that within the tube there is a plate in that plate usually there is a hole simply drill hole and the ratio of the length to diameter is 2 to 4 if diameter is 4 unit then length is only 2 unit say 2 millimeter thickness mean at the most 4 millimeter diameter is the hole but usually you find very thin plate and very small hole is used and usually a straight hole in some cases also hole with an inclined um, entry or maybe distance side it is used normally straight hole is the best now from this uh, diameter and the length ratio we can find out the coefficient there there are different models but we will see some realistic data the upstream orifice diameter d0 is derived using these equations we would like to maintain this ratio is equal to 1 and from there this is a f is the that is the curtain area and a 0 is this upstream uh, origin a uh, sorry orifice area ok. Now, this again can be written in this form and then simplifying the above equations we get d 0 is equal to that is the fixed orifice diameter is equal to 2 root over C D A by C D 0 into D n x F 0 ok. D n is the diameter of this nozzle. Now, other parameters what we find is uh, you can see that C D 0 that is the coefficient of discharge at the uh, this orifice you see this is in the range of 0 0.8, 0 0.9, where normally we find that 0 0.6 is the good value for, for the orifice. That means, this is actually capillary short tube, where it is written itself, because the in comparison to in case of these orifices, the length is very small, very thin plate and then there is a hole, whereas in, in this cases certain length is there, but it is found that using some such short type uh, short tube orifice is better for the from the control point of view. And uh, as we find whereas, this is 0 0.6 to 0 0.85 that is if we consider the coefficient of discharge here this is 0 0.6 to 0.85. And, um, Mm, usually C D A by C D 0 is preliminary designed. That means, when there is no movement of the x b is equal to x f is equal to 0, in that case this ratio is a good design. Now, if we uh, consider the realistic value say x f 0 is 25 micron, you can imagine how small it is. Then d n is 0 0.4 millimeter only whereas, d 0 0.18 millimeter and the flow there is 0 0.45 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube. That means, it is uh, no it is some 4.5 shall we call this meter cube means in uh, in relation to the cc uh, 10 to the power 6 yeah so 4.5 cc ok so in uh, if it is 50 micron then this is 0 0.8 and this is 0 0.36 and 17.25 cc and if it is 75 micron then 1.2 0.54 and this is 39 this is to have an idea that what usually, usually the flow say you can consider this is perhaps for the direct valve and this is maybe for the pilot stage and this might be for the pilot stage of very big valve. Now again so this is sorry this is not <laughs> properly merged if we consider that uh, 
some realistic data more realistic data uh, on this what we find this is d n is of course, it is given in inch 0 0.893 inch 0 0.893 is means here it is a quite large one ok. And then there the Reynolds number are uh, say 1000, 2000 and 3000 and for that what we get the coefficient of discharge is varying from 0 0.6 to almost 1 a point 0.9598 something like that uh, and it is more at uh, large Reynolds number and that means, the high velocity flow and it is less with the less Reynolds numbers. Now, <coughs> and this is the ratio of L into x f 0. What is L? L is the we can see that and this is the nozzle actually ok and this is the curtain height and this nozzle means if we say suppose if we decrease this L that means, it is almost a tapered hole in that case that this say L is less means this is we are in this side. So, coefficient discharge will be less whereas, if you go on increasing this coefficient of discharge will be more and uh, this alpha angle this value is not given here. Um, I have no idea also what is, is the this area uh, this alpha angle is there ok. So, this is some realistic value to understand how this nozzle is designed and uh, this is mainly we have followed this Merit's book this is hydraulic control system and also uh, some idea is taken from the Blackburn uh, Rayforth and Sierra's fluid power control books. Thank you for listening. <coughs>